Hello and welcome to this video. I'm calling Snort 3 Rule Actions and this applies to the Cisco Secure Firewall Release 7.1. I'm Alex Tadashev with Cisco Systems. Let's talk about some background first. So this is regarding the rule actions. Now in 7.0, FTD devices running Snort 3 supported six Snort rule actions. You can see those there, alert block, reject, rewrite, pass, and drop. However, the FMC in release 7 only supports two Snort 3 rule actions. So in your policies, you can only configure two actions on your rules. They're either gonna be set to alert or block. Now release 7.1, adds the FMC capability to support those additional rule actions. So now we have six rule actions for Snort 3 supported on 7.1. So what that means is, if you're managing a 7.0 device with a 7.1 FMC, you can still use all those six rule actions because the device supports those. We just didn't have any way to push a policy to that device with those additional actions in 7.0. So 7.1 FMC managing 7.0 device, this still works, of course, 7.1 managing 7.1, it works as well. So let's talk about these new Snort 3 rule actions. The first new action in 7.1 is pass. Pass causes the rule to skip all subsequent Snort rules when it has an action of pass and matches a packet. By the way, you may notice that these are not new to Snort necessarily, they're new to Snort 3 because this pass rule action, Miracle, actually exists in Snort 2 already. Another new one is drop. So drop means drop the packet only. Do not block the entire connection or flow. Reject, block the packet and send a TCP reset if the protocol's TCP or an ICMP port are reachable if the protocol's UDP. Normally, with drop or block keywords, we don't send any notification, we don't send any packets out of the device to let anyone know that we dropped a connection, but this one, you can do that. And rewrite where we replace the packet contents. Okay, so the pass action. Snort 2 equivalent, pass. Now this works exactly the same in Snort 3 as it does in Snort 2. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on the pass action here. The packets matching a pass rule do not generate alerts. They skip all remaining Snort rules. Uh, the rule here below, I've taken a rule written to block team viewer access from internal your internal network, and I've kind of modified it so the source IP is just a single host and it's a pass rule now. So the idea here is there's a rule already in the rule set, similar to this one, where the source IP here, instead of being 10.1.132 is actually home net. And that rule is designed to prevent people from going in and making team viewer work, right? So it looks inside the packet, looks for the certain contents. If it sees it, it, it blocks the traffic. But in this case, I have a host, a user who's at 10.1.132 that needs to use team viewer. So if I put this rule in the rule set, what's gonna happen is when this person tries to go to TeamViewer, this rule is gonna match the traffic because of course it contains that content, but it's gonna be a pass rule, which means that once it hits this rule, that packet will not be evaluated by further rules down the rule set. And so this allows this person to go to TeamViewer, but no one else. Another rule action is drop. Now this is actually the same keyword that is used in Snort 2, but it's different. So there is no Snort 2 equivalent for this. A drop rule means that packets matching the rule are dropped. However, the connection they're a part of is not blocked. Use this to drop only the offending packet. So in this case, you can see it's just a regular rule. It's looking for a particular uh, Apache uh, struts issue and you notice the keyword at the front is drop instead of block. Now normally this would be block. Again, if it's a malicious attempt at something, uh, typically you don't just want to block the one attempt. You want to basically block the rest of that connection and that's what the block keyword does and that's what the drop keyword does in Snort 2. But the drop keyword in Snort 3 is different. So it's really important to note, same keyword between 2 and 3, different function. That's why they say, I said here, there's no Snort 2 equivalent. I'm putting this in big red on the screen here, right? Key takeaway here, snort two drop equals snort three block. So remember, drop in snort three is not the same as drop in snort two. The equivalent would be a block action in snort three, and that's probably what you want to use anyway. There are very few cases I can think of, if I can't think of any actually, where this drop keyword would be appropriate to snort three. I mean, there are some obviously, but 
be real careful um, and make sure that you know what you're doing when you use this keyword. Next one is reject. Uh, and snort tool equivalent is also reject. So this is the same uh, rule action. If you wanted to send a TCP reset, ICMP port are reachable. Again, you wouldn't probably do this for someone uh, malicious inbound connection because then you're basically telling the attacker, hey, we know you're there, we're gonna, re we're gonna reset your connection. Normally we just silently drop attacks so the attacker's left wondering, you know, what's going on. But same in snort two and snort three. And the rewrite keyword. So the rewrite keyword is new in snort three, but it does have a snort two equivalent, which is just alert. So uh, the rewrite keyword is used in conjunction with the replace keyword in the rule. So if you look down below in the rule, I have a, a content check in there looking for some specific bytes. And then after that, there's a replace option to replace those bytes with null bytes. Now in snort two, Again, if this rule is written for snort2, it's got some tweaks in it, so it's not a snort2 rule, but if this was a snort2 rule, uh, that would be all you would need, and you would use alert for the action. But in snort3, really the rules are very similar, and you've got to replace keyword along with the content check, but you need to use the rewrite action in the key in the, in the the uh, rule. If you don't use the rewrite action, the rule still will trigger, it just will not rewrite the content. So keep that in mind. You have to use the rewrite action if you want rules to replace content in snort3. Now, as far as the, the UI, I'm, I'm actually gonna go into the UI and demonstrate some other features here in a, in a bit, but I just wanna show you what this looks like uh, just on a slide here. So basically when you're in the Snort3 policy editing a rule, when you click the rule action dropdown, you notice you have a lot of actions there now, uh, not just the three. So you know, I'll make them bigger for you there. So block, alert, rewrite, pass, drop, reject, disable. Now. Technically, disable is not a rule action, so when you see those actions, don't think of disable as an action. That just means the rule is removed from the rule set. Now, if all you came for were to see the new rule keywords, uh, that's the video, and feel free to leave now. You won't hurt my feelings. But what I want to do is I want to go on a little further and talk about some additional changes that have been done in the 7.1 UI that I think really helps people that want to edit rules on the UI. Now we don't have the GUI rule editor, but I can show you now how you can actually duplicate a rule, create a custom rule, and edit a rule in the UI on the FMC. So if you want to see that, stick around, have some fun. Okay, so here we are on the FMC. I'm looking at the policy list. So this is, you know, policies, intrusion policy. And I'm going to just edit one of my Snort3 policies here. And while we're here, just to show you these rule actions, of course, they're right here. Just what we just talked about, they're right there, so you can change a rule. So let's talk about editing rules. Uh, now let me uh, go back to the, uh, let's tell you what, let's go back to uh, the team viewer rule that uh, we looked at before, or something similar anyway. Now let's go through the scenario of saying, hey, okay, um, I want to take this team viewer rule, is made to detect the remote administration tool outbound connection attempt and of course if I turned that on and enabled it to, to, to block that would prevent theoretically anyone in my network going out and connecting to team viewer so let's say I do that okay, I want this rule I want it enabled great but later on I have that person that, that actually needs to get to the team viewer site how do I fix that I have to create a pass rule now in seven version or at least seven you'd have to go and download the rule and change it and upload it but here you can actually duplicate that rule in the UI. So if I go over here to the right, new icon here called Duplicate Intrusion Rule. Now if I click that, I get this free text editor here. So again, it's not a GUI editor with drop downs you can pick, but if you're familiar with the rules language at all, you can come in here and you can actually modify this rule. Now, uh, I should say you're not modifying the rule, right? You don't get to modify a Talos rule that says right up there in blue right at the top. When you duplicate a Talos rule, you have to use a SID, unique value greater than a million, and it's going to create a new rule. Of course, you can't change the Talos rule. Now, the only thing to keep in mind here is when you're editing this rule, is you're going to have to pick a SID for your rule, security ID, right? A million or higher. If you already have some custom rules, then you better know when you get here which SIDs are available, right? If you already have a million rule, you can't make this rule SID one million. So. Um, you might find yourself going, oh, I gotta have to come up with a SID. You have to exit here, go back to your custom rules, see what your next SID available is. But 
Um, I don't know that I think I can use a million, so I'm going to try to use it here. Okay, so let's say we want to take this rule and follow my uh, previous scenario and just change it to pass for that particular user. So first thing I'm going to do is change the rule action to pass. We'll change that source IP to that user, and I don't remember what IP I had in there, but let's say 10.1.132. So it's going to be a pass rule applying only to that IP. Everything else about the rule we want to stay, at least the detection portion, right? We want this kind of content check here to still work, right? Now we don't need the references. Honestly, we just don't need those. So I'll tell you what, uh, we don't need the class type either. Um, let's just take all that out. I'm going to take all that out. Yeah, we don't need the. Uh, the reference keywords, boom. We really don't need this policy keyword either. In fact, we don't need that metadata at all. Let's take that out. So I'm just trying to make the rule shorter, make it easier to read for someone who looks at it later. Now this is rev one of my new rules, so I'm changing the revision. I'm gonna change the SID. One, two, three, four, five, six, one million. Okay, service HTTP, everything looks good. Uh, now the other thing you might change in a pass rule is the message. Uh, now again, this rule is never going to trigger an alert, so you'll never see this message in the GUI. But um, it doesn't hurt to, to change it. So when you're searching through rules and it pops up in the UI, you realize it's a pass rule. But uh, it's up to you. But I'm going to change it a little bit there. Now, assuming I didn't make any syntax errors, I should be good to go. Now. What's going to happen is we're going to try to save this into a rule group. Well, there aren't any, any custom rule groups created yet because this is a, a new FMC. There's no new custom rules. So I have to create a new custom rule group. Uh, hey, let's call it custom pass rule. That's a good name. All right, custom pass rules and optional description. So it's going to create the rule group. And then again, for more than one rule groups, you could, you could select a one or more rule groups to add this rule to. But I'm just going to add it to that one since I just added it. And then when I click Save as New, this is the moment of truth. This is going to check the syntax and see if I didn't screw something up. Okay, good. Okay, so now I have a new rule. Great. Well, where is it? Well, let's uh, let's find it. Let's look for Sid. I remember ways to find this. Quick, quick, so I can think of just look for the Sid. Okay, so there's my Sid. So notice the GID is 2000, that's uh, in Snort 3, that's what you get for custom rules. Uh, it's a rule with a pass action. So all I need to do is enable it, just set it to pass. And it's in my custom pass rules rule set. So that's all I need to do, and this will allow that one user to view the team viewer while the rest of the company cannot get to team viewer. Now I want to show you one more thing. What if we want to go and edit this rule? So we talked about duplicating a, a rule that's a Talos rule and then making your own custom rule. Well, what if I wanted to go and tweak this rule further? You can also do that. So if we go over here to Objects, Intrusion Rules, it applies to any custom rule, right? So if you have Snort3 custom rules that you want to edit on the FMC, here's how you do it. So here's my local rule group that I just created, Custom Pass Rules. So if I pick that, you should see the one rule there. Okay, that's cool. Now, you notice it's got a little pencil over here. Mm, cool, I can edit the intrusion rule. Nice. So now if I look at this rule, let's say that, oh, um, I want to put, oh, I don't know, a date on this. Let's say uh, January 2022, for whatever reason. Okay, change the message a little bit. So what I have to do is, now what it's going to do is I, if I say save as new, it's probably gonna give me an error because I have the same SID there. It's gonna say, hey, you can't do that. You gotta SID with that already. If I try to save it though, it, it still won't update it because the revision number hasn't been incremented. Now what the system checks for here is when you try to re-import a rule with the SID that's existing, it checks the revision number. And if it's not newer, it won't update. So what I just need to do here is I'm gonna bump that rev from one to two. Pretty straightforward. So I made the change in the date, change the rev, now I should be able to click save. So re-import that rule, updating it to revision two. And just to verify that, yep, there's the rule. You can see it's got a rev two and it's also got the date in it. That's all I have for today. I hope that is useful. And uh, as always, happy snorting.